Shade Tree Commission meeting. We have uh, one item on the agenda tonight, that being 837 Parks Run Lane. Uh, it's the uh, raising of an existing dwelling and to construct a new house. They are proposing to remove 43 trees and replant 45. Uh, there will be 560 cubic yards of soil to be kept on site. Um, the concerns that have been expressed at this point is there is a grading line that is quite close to some of the trees that they are recommending they want to preserve. And the question is whether or not the house, proposed house and garage can be moved back closer to the setback line. I understand we're waiting for the landscape architect to arrive, but if not, that's the questions on the table. What's the difference between the, the lines? Two feet or one? I can't read it from here. <clears throat> 436 is four foot. That's a four foot. Yeah, they're two four foot wide. Yeah. Well, there, there's an existing, existing spot shot of 434.77. It's along the front. It's a little bit over, it's about 15 inches or so of fill along that 436 contour. So it's actually lower at the street than it is here. Yeah. But piling soil on top of Mm -hmm. They're significant sized trees. <coughs> Is it possible just to move the grading line back? That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, yeah, rather than moving the house, we could push the 436 back to get out of the drip lines. It's barely, if you look at, excuse me, if you look at the, you know, I, I've measured out how far the trees are from the actual, where the grading changes. Whenever you do a grading change, it's not as clean as it suggests on a plan. Um, You've got a 20-inch ash, you're 19 feet away from it. The 23-inch ash, another 19 feet away from it. The 24-inch ash, 20 feet away from it. You're, you're underneath the canopy of all those trees. So you'd like to see this move back 20, 30? <clears throat> I would like to see, you know, again, I'm the only one that's reviewed this, and you folks are being introduced to it, but... I would like to see the whole thing moved back to the setback line. How far is that? That's the dashed line. Yeah, I know, but I'm 10, I'm feet, ten feet, is it? <clears throat> it might be 15. You're probably around 15, yeah. It's about 15. I mean, any room that, if you really want to give those trees their best chance, that would be my recommendation. that do to the way you planned it? It would, it would lengthen your front yard, shrink the backyard a little bit. Right, it would shrink the backyard. It would, um, they also have plans for a future garage, so it would push the future garage back, push the whole driveway back. It would add an impervious cover to the site. Um, I think What's the level of impervious coverage now? What percentage? They they have room. They're only at um, they're at under sixteen percent according to this plan. They're allowed twenty two percent. But if anything, I, th I think we would be able to revise the grading out front a little bit to reduce the impact to those trees rather than push the house back. <clears throat> you also have a stormwater 
is that a spreader where the 25 inch ash tree is? Right. <clears throat> and that's within 15 feet of a 25 inch ash. Yeah, yeah, that's really the only place on site that we can put it. There's a natural swale that starts pretty much right underneath where we have the spreader. Uh, we tried to put it in between the 24 inch ash and the 26 inch ash as best we could. the lowest point on site. It's really the only place to, to bring it. This ash line is to right away. Right away. Yeah. I mean, if, if possible, we would put it in the street, up towards the street. Or would that be violating? Well, that, it moves it. We can't be closer to the street. And this is, we're kind of stuck, um, elevation wise as to where we can put the spreader we can't move it I guess it wouldn't really matter anywhere else along the right of way because there's trees right along the right of way so we thought this space in here would create the least impact of any place but that's right along the edge right that's right away right, you yeah. couldn't you're not allowed to encroach on the right way no you're not oh well And then you also have a 27-inch oak, which looks to me as though it's going to be impacted significantly by some further construction. That would be to the west of the house, I believe. Do you see the 27-inch oak? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we um, we have the we have it graded in here. To, you know, we have a little bit of we're filling it a little bit, right. like two feet in this spot. But right. we, we're trying to keep it as reduce the impact as much as possible <coughs> um, in that area. And you're like a, a, you know twenty five feet away from your 40 inch uh, perforated system it being a 27 inch oak you're working under its canopy again is there any way that system can be moved um, the only place we could move it is we could push it further closer to the street but if we do that then we're going to have to adjust the grading and we're going to start impacting these ash trees up front. <coughs> we tried to squeeze it in there between those trees. Yeah, it looks like that oak is the, the most significant tree that would be remaining on the property. Um, and in taking down 45 trees, it, it seems almost outrageous to further to inflict damage than on the, the best remaining tree um, you know coming at the oak from two sides 15 feet from the change in grade because of the house and then with the um, with the water aspect being within 25 feet of that like, this just seems like a really bad plan for this lot. Yeah, we have the stormwater system 30 feet off the oak tree. Uh, looks to me, or measurements Howard did was 25. So whether it's 25 or 30, it's still uh, quite close. And you're doing a change in grade there or not? Yeah, it's 25. Yeah, it's 25 feet. <clears throat> And, and again, it's not an exact science. Once you're digging something like that, you're you're going beyond what the exact lines on the plan are suggesting. So, you know, I, I, we truly don't 
want to sit here and try to drill you. And, but we, you know, I, I think this needs to be re revisited. Um, you either you suggest you're going to have to take down more trees than you're suggesting, or you re-engineer how the house sits on this lot. And in all honesty, the only way I see this is going to work is if you seek a variance on your setback, if you really want to hold on to those trees that you're suggesting you want to hold on, on to. Excuse me. Are you with the engineering firm? Yeah, we're, I'm from Mommy. Yeah, yeah. Mom yeah. So I don't, I don't see how the landscape architect can do anything directly with the way the house well, is drawn. There's a pretty substantial landscaping plan where they're replanning uh, a significant amount of trees. So. But it, I mean, to lose 45 trees and to come so close to. 27 inch I think, oak. I think the, the majority of the trees that they're clearing out up front are not in very good shape, and that's the reason why they're clearing those out. There's a bunch of, I believe there's pine trees that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> They wanted to clean the lot. They wanted to provide a better landscaping plan than what that's what they're now. So a lot of those they wanted to get rid of and plant with a nicer tree. But I, I agree with what Howard says that it needs to be revisited. Yeah, no, there's no way the trees that you're suggesting that are going to stay on site are going to survive the construction proposed. So you've got to make a move, well, not you, whoever, has got to make a move one way or the other as to, you know, are you going to hold on to these trees and plant more? <coughs> or, excuse me, hold on to these trees and, and change your design, or are you going to re, you know, take them down and suggest you're going to plant more? So. I would suggest you and your architect, landscape architect, put your brains around it as well as you know whoever the the uh, developer is, and, and revisit it next next month. Again, we're not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, let me try to give him a call. Uh, Maybe he's trying to call me. I don't know. <clears throat> nope. But he's already 20 minutes late. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and I don't see what the landscape architect can do to, to make any changes. It's, no. He, it's, it's moving the... Yeah. Uh, it's making bigger decisions than what that person can make. Okay, in the meantime, I um, just want to announce uh, March 3rd, Radnor Conservancy is hosting a Everything You Wanted to Know About Trees at the Windsor Room in, in the Radnor Library between 7 and 8.30. Anyone that might be watching and is interested in trees, this would be a very informative um, presentation. The uh, we met with the township commissioners uh, on Monday night, and they supported our effort to continue to plant uh, canopy trees along Route 30. Uh, this spring, we will be planting 25 more. Hopefully, next fall, an additional 25. Um, and once uh, those trees are planted, we will start reaching out to the rest of Radnor Township to other major arteries and hopefully even into uh, individual homeowners who might desire trees. 
Uh, this is a three-way partnership between Radnor Township, uh, the Public Works Department primarily, um, generous uh, financial support from the Chanticleer Foundation, and also financial and other support from the Radnor Conservancy. So we are glad to, to announce um, that progress. And the next Shade Tree Commission meeting will be on March 24th. And sir, excuse me, do, have you had any luck contacting him? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Well, I would suggest that we bring this, uh, this meeting to a close unless anyone else has any information to share. And we will, in essence, table this until next month. Assuming they're not going to survive or else redesign the site to save those trees? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you very much.